Well, Ukraine is pledging to spend three billion, with a B, dollars, folks, beefing up its military. The country's current arsenal was on display at a parade marking 23 years of independence from the former Soviet Union. President Poroshenko says that, quote, a constant military threat, unquote, hangs over Ukraine. Much of the military equipment will be used to combat rebels in the east. Well, meanwhile, that Russian convoy said to be loaded with humanitarian aid crossed over into Ukraine without being inspected and with no Red Cross escort. And there were fears that the convoy was actually a cover for delivering weapons to the rebels. After making their delivery, the convoy returned back to Russia. Well, Steve Oconto is Chancellor of Consular Corps College. He, let's, uh, uh, I, thank you for being here, and you're always good. I thank first you, want sir. to talk about this convoy incident. Uh, was it a public relations stunt, or was there something more insidious about this convoy? Uh, I, I think, well, yes. It was a public relations action. There have been other public relations actions. Mm -hmm. This weekend is Independence Day weekend in uh, Ukraine, and it's been a particularly emotional weekend. Uh, the emotion and the display of troops were also a public relations action. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin, well, if you want to talk about public relations, you know, the first thing you learn in that field, I, I'm not in it, but I know a little bit about it, you learn that you pitch whatever you're doing to mm -hmm. a particular audience. So in this case, we have Vladimir Putin playing to his hometown audience by offering help, or what would seem to be help, to distressed Russians within the region and others, and getting, uh, t taking an action at a time when he's asked his country to sacrifice. These sanctions are sacrifices. But the public relations is happening on all different sides. The effect of that on a different audience, on the Wall Street Journal readers, on readers of uh, the more conservative uh, pages of, in this uh, world, the effect is the opposite. It's Putin chipping away and making an invasion. So well, that's... yeah, and, and, and some people are obviously thinking that, and perhaps for good reason. Now, may I ask you a question, though, in terms of these humanitarian trucks going into Ukraine? Uh, do you think, and also when I call Steve, this is a chess game here, that perhaps Putin is trying to divert, divert attention from the sanctions, the, 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 the increased sanctions on uh, his country uh, by the U.S. and, of course, their allies? Yes, and he's doing it precisely at a time he met yesterday with Angela Merkel, mm -hmm. who is now the foreign policy leader de facto of Europe, and who in fact um, indicated displeasure with what was going on, indicated to the Ukraine that uh, they should strengthen the borders, and to Putin the fact that uh, there must be some sort of compromise. In other words, she didn't go there and say, well, let's, let's end sanctions, let's do this, let's back down. So he has to have the momentum of his own people working for it. But Steve, what is the give and take here? I mean, obviously it seems quite clear to many people that Putin wants more control, more autonomy uh, over uh, certain parts of, of, of Eastern Europe, of course, Ukraine being the first step in, in what could be a domino effect. But how far can he push realistically <laughs> before uh, the U.S. and their allies push back? That's the public relations question. Mm. Because right now, chipping away being what, Par what uh, Poroshenko said yesterday on Independence Day was, we will have an enemy at our borders. We can expect to have it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, that diffuses, in a way, uh, some of the fears, because people say, well, is Ukraine ready for this? Well, they're going to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. So Putin will have to make a move. But meantime, he was hoping, I think, to bait the Ukrainians into stopping or shelling or in some way destroying that convoy of what was described as humanitarian aid. Very good ploy, I mean, well, I have to say. But, Trojan horse, you know. Oh, Trojan <laughs> horse or maybe the 800-pound gorilla in the room because we really don't know uh, what uh, uh, lodged inside those those. Oh, well, we had a rough idea, a pretty rough idea. It wasn't, it doesn't seem to be armaments. And now when the boats, the, when the uh, boats, when the caravan went back, they were applauded on, on, on returning into Russia. Uh, as heroes. Mm -hmm. So again, the momentum at home for Putin is great. Mm -hmm. He's not giving that up. So it seems in a sense, Steve, that perhaps that, uh, that convoy was set in because we've, we've heard reports uh, that in this, this war between the separatists uh, uh, and uh, the Ukrainians, that the Ukrainians are actually winning this war. Maybe that's why they yeah. sent the, those trucks They in. definitely have made advances. And the fact that they were not intimidated. In other words, the, the intimidation factor here is very big. 
you're suddenly coming up against this, the Russian bear, if you will. You're not mm -hmm. backing down. They're picking, they're picking a fight. You're answering it back forcefully. I think you're right. I think that the momentum may have been also uh, delivered by that fact. We've got less than a minute here. What do you think of Obama's handling of this whole situation, at least in a fraction of his foreign policy? You know, they use the expression optics mm. uh, in news. His optics have been terrible. Hmm. Uh, for Maureen Dowd of the New York Times, a staunch cheerleader for Obama, to write a parody today, in today's paper, uh, of the Gettysburg Address, making Obama speak about the pleasures of golf and the importance of it, is an indication of what is seen, again, as lassitude. It may not be. Mm -hmm. It may not be indifference. It may not be lassitude. It may be an attempt at showing austerity. Right. You're not going to interrupt my game. Mm -hmm. But the effect, again, public relations has been terrible. Well, you know, Bush did it too when he was uh, about he, the Israelis. We, we, we got a break he, here, but he said, you know, okay, I'm going to tell you about this while I'm playing golf, and now watch my drive. People forget that. Right. You know. I, right. No, but, I, you're right. You, it, it is. It goes to even Eisenhower. Yeah. I, I just, I, 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 well, I just think that, <laughs> and, and in closing here real quickly, I think Obama gets a little bit too much criticism for things that other presidents have, have done twice as much as he has. True. And I have my differences with Obama, but I can't say that. Uh, well, he that raised the bar in expectations, Julie. Well, that's true. Got to give him that. Steve, we got to go. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much. As, always. as always. Thank you. Pleasure.